we're going to be working on a, a particular kind of habitat creation uh, workshop today where we'll be using uh, reused materials like this old bit of plumbing pipe, um, some old uh, fly wire or, or you can possibly use carpet for this and the aim of what we're doing today is to create um, an artificial tree hollow um, and the sort of concept behind that, the reason that, that it would be important for, for certain wildlife is, um, well in Australia actually in particular there are a lot of um, different animal species which depend on tree hollows for their survival and it's quite a unique situation we've got in Australia. Um, there are no um, primary uh, hollow creating animals so that there are no woodpeckers here um, that would actually go to a tree and, and, uh, and create a hole. So uh, in, in our gum trees it, it usually takes um, over a hundred years for a, a, a sizable hollow to form and um, so that's what you can see here. Um, uh, this was from a, a longleaf box, um, that's the kind of, the, of tree that this formed in and uh, you can see it's the, the sides of this hollow are riddled with um, kind of all sorts of, of different textures and um, so it's been created very very slowly over time um, as a say as a, a branch breaks off as you can see that that's happened here then fungi and um, and termites and, and other in, uh, invertebrates make their way into the tree and over many many years they'll start to hollow it out and I've actually got an example of one of those um, organisms here uh, I'll just see if I can fish it out um, <laughs> let's see there we go okay so I don't know if you want a, a close-up I can probably bring it up to the camera um, so these are they're sleeping so it's a cold morning but um, they might wake up so these are um, grey furrowed rose chafers so they're, they're the the larvae of a, a kind of beetle uh, which actually specializes in using hollows um, and I had these uh, as, uh, as eggs they were laid in into one of my nesting boxes um, that I eventually had to take down um, just because it was it had been up for five or six years so I've moved them into that hollow where they're still developing and um, probably this summer they'll um, they'll pupate, they'll create a little pupa just like a butterfly would uh, or a caterpillar would sorry before it turns into a butterfly and then uh, in the height of summer probably around January they'll pop out as a, um, a beautiful big black and grey beetle which uh, which then is a very important pollinator of, of gum trees but in the meantime they're um, actually helping to compact all of the rotting material in the bottom of this hollow so if they were in a natural tree hollow they'd be making it deeper and deeper um, and more suitable for things like uh, parrots or owls which like a very very deep tree hollow so that's the interesting thing about hollows in gum trees is different animals will use them at different stages so um, this this little entrance here where the branches come off would be big enough for say something like a sugar glider to fit in or a, or a red rumped parrot but then maybe in another 50 years something like this could maybe be used by uh, larger possums and larger parrots and things like that um, but uh, in, in the case of, uh, of certain animals like uh, well 54 of our 56 parrots or, or roughly that now there's been a few taxonomic changes um, all of them uh, rely on tree hollows to be able to breed so in a place like this where we're in a, a kind of altered landscape most of the old original trees have been taken out and so there are very few tree hollows left and that's where these nest boxes come in so uh, the one we're building today is hopefully going to be used by micro bats um, and in particular we're expecting ghouls wattled bats um, yeah so most of the micro bats in Australia um, use tree hollows whereas you might see in movies or um, documentaries from overseas a lot of them live in caves um, here hollows are a very very important resource for micro bats and uh, they'll often switch between um, different hollows at different times of the year so what we're building here is quite a, a thin walled uh, and poorly insulated hollow um, which perhaps they'll use in the warmer months particularly uh, particularly when they're very active in the summer but 
It's it's very difficult still though to replicate the the great sort of insulating um, properties of a real tree hollow. We're trying using all sorts of different things like sleepers and stuff, but um, it seems like different micro bats have very different um, uh, preferences for the kind of hollow they use as well. And we haven't quite worked all of this out. So there's a lot of research that <clears throat> that still needs to go into the design of nesting boxes. And um, it's at such an early stage that almost anyone can, can actually contribute to uh, conservation research um, just by trying different designs. And so that's what I did here with this PVC pipe uh, and a bit of carpet a few years ago. I just decided to try and use uh, you know, stuff you can find in hard rubbish. And I put a box up after uh, maybe three days of coming here um, in the evenings and actually watching where the bats were regularly flying. And I found a very well used route in the park where they flew up and down quite often. And I put the box right in that path. And uh, then within 13 days, the first bat found the box and it was in there during the day. And then very quickly, it must have uh, told all its mates and now there's about 30 uh, bats that, that live in a, in a tube not unlike this one. So they're very small, these micro bats. Um, and apart from just the, the benefit to the bats themselves, it's also it's great for, for the, the, the general ecosystem and also for us too, uh, having them around because um, well, it was soon after these bats moved in, I noticed that um, boobook owls started hanging around the box as well. So they like to eat bats. But it, then also the bats themselves are known to eat uh, up to half their body weight in, um, in small insects every night. So that in includes mosquitoes. And most people are very happy to hear that. And uh, also in a place like this where we've got productive gardens, um, having small insectivorous animals um, is very handy because uh, Micro bats can help control insect pests in the garden. They'll feed on whatever's common at the time. Um, so that might be caterpillars or various types of flies and things like that. So um, yeah, useful animals to encourage.